Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a vlog that discusses pretty much what's happened throughout the week, what I have planned, and what's coming up. And if you want to hear more, just stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. All right, so there's, I've got uh, quite a few things in the works, as many of you know. I have taken a break on the bag a day 1986 shirt conversion for a few days because if you if you follow my channel you know that I suffered from tennis elbow <laughs> I gave myself tennis elbow creating the blanket that I put up for her auction and it was a king size blanket and it's been getting a lot better but with the stitches that I'm using for the shirt conversion to Tunisian there's a lot of movement so I'm I can only do so much all I have left now is the back and to put it together and then do the trim and collar the side panels and the sleeves are all blocked so they're done um, I have been working on another little project that I have coming up after that's done there's a lot more stitch tutorials coming out as you just saw the Tunisian houndstooth there's going to be a, quite a few more I have the stitch from let me look it up the stitch from 1890 the from the book that Miss C's Cottage which I'll link her channel below. She sent me a book. Well, first she sent me some uh, pictures of two stitches. And then she just she sent me the book from Lion Brand. And it had two, two Afghan stitches. Back then, that's what it was called. Afghan crochet. And there was two stitches. I did a lot of research on those two stitches. Those two stitches are nowhere to be found. They have counterparts in, in Tunisian crochet, but they're nowhere to be found. So I did one of them. The other one, I think there's a mistake in the pattern, the wording of the stitch. So I need to rethink that because it wasn't coming out looking like it should come out to look. Maybe it was a whole new stitch I was creating too. I don't know. That may come out too. <laughs> Who knows? Then there's a couple other stitches that I figured out. I'm still in the process of working on a granny stitch, Tunisian stitch, or Tunisian granny stitch. There you go. <laughs> That's better. And right now it's kind of in timeout because it's irritating me. I've gotten it somewhat figured out. It's just I'm trying to figure out the end. I want it to look a certain way and it's frustrating me that I'm not getting there. There's a way, I know. So I'm going to be working with that a little bit more. I want to just step away from it for a little bit and do other things. And then I, and, and think about it. Let me just, you know, crochet it up in my head how I want it to look. And boom. Now there's a bunch of other stitches that I was pretty much just given the library to. They have no name. So... It's up to me to come up with names. And I've got names. Some of them I've already started naming. And I am going to be putting those tutorials out too. They are they are sort of extra stitches, I guess you could say, because they're combinations. They're a mix of tip, tips, tips and tricks. They're just a, a mixture. But I want to incorporate those into the Tunisian library. Because they are done in Tunisian. And it, it's falling upon me to name them. And I'm going to. I'm going to name them things that make sense. I'm not just going to willy-nilly just name something. You know? So, I have that coming up. Then... I have a bunch of other items, tips, tricks, and item makes coming up 
There's going to be the beanie will drop this Friday. The then there's a few others that I need to do. But the at that 1890 stitch back to that I'm I got carried away and back on that to that 1890 stitch. In the book, the book was published in 1910. But I was doing some digging on the actual original name. And saw that it was first published in 1890 in the in a London newspaper. And I guess that's how in the 1800s, late 1800s, it was they did them in newspapers, magazines, I guess. I don't know. I mean, this stitch is 130 years old. Plus. So, it's an oldie. It does share a name with another Tunis Tunisian stitch. However, it's, it's totally different. And that will be coming out. The. Around the 8th of August. Is that when I'm trying to get it out? I already filmed it. I already got it. Got the swatch. Got it all done. I just got to edit it and I got to move some stuff around and because I've already pre-scheduled a bunch of stitch tutorials. So I need to move those all around, you know, shuffle. And then there's a bunch more that I'm going to be filming and getting more out there. Same with item makes, you know, I want to do a really cool scarf. I want to do infinity, show you how to do cool scarves and infinity scarves, uh, fingerless gloves, mittens, slouchy hats. I still want my braided ear warmer that I want to do. There's just a lot I have planned. And then it's going to go into wraps and shawls. I've got a lot of wraps. The names are really, really cool. The technique you're going to be using is going to be really, really cool with some of these wraps. And all of that, I'm still trying to design a Boggy Creek blanket. She's got yarn too, and and charmed Grammy crash crochet, as well as Nina Knotts crochet. They put a challenge out to designers and YouTubers to design a Boggy Creek blanket. So I'm working with that and Tunisian. I have a few ideas that I want to do. And it's not going to be checkerboard because I'm not going to be known as the checkerboard person. I have a few ideas in my head. Um, Panda's been helping me with flushing some out. So there's other works going. Bucky Creek blankets aren't that big. I believe they're 30 or 40 inches wide by... I have it somewhere. 35 to 40 inches wide and 40 to 50 inches long. So they're not that big. It's throw size. Maybe just a little bit smaller. So I have a confined space I need to work in to get this pattern that I have. So there's that. <laughs> there's a lot on my plate and I'm I'm relishing it. I, I like to stay busy. I like to have my mind constantly moving. If my mind's not moving, I'm not crocheting. Um, I have a lot, again, as I said before, I have a lot in the works. It's coming. There's, like, for my first wrap, there's some techniques that need to be, I don't know why, but I need to teach them first before I can drop the wrap. There's technique. they're out there already, the tutorials are out there, but it just doesn't make sense in my mind for me to release the wrap with that technique in it, and I haven't done a tutorial on it. If that makes sense. So I'm not going to release it until I do it. To do the technique that's going to be needed for one of these wraps. And it is a known Tunisian technique. But it's not widely used. And it needs to be. Because it can, oh my gosh. So there's a lot again going on. And then as you all saw last week. And I shared it on my community post. 
we made a, I made a, a panda pattern, basic for basic Tunisian crocheter to learn color change. And it's a panda. Panda Bonham Express Tony did it and it's coming out, it came out phenomenal. So we know it works. We know the pattern works. And it, it it's really was put out to teach color change. That was the main aspect for that one is to show how color change works and to teach color change. And so it worked really well because he did it and he did it a phenomenal job. Let's see what else do I got going in the works. I think that's about it. I did have, I have gotten some happy mail in the past few weeks. I mentioned one of them. I never really showed it off. There's been two YouTubers who have channels that have sent me stuff in honor of my mom's passing. And they're done in the Alzheimer dementia awareness color purple and June was Alzheimer's dementia awareness month and of course June 1st is when my mother passed away and the first person that sent me something was Mama Winch aka Marianne she sent me a really nice crochet bag And I I use I use it. I have been using it to store the the yarn that I am using for the bag of day shirt conversion, so I don't get it lost anywhere. But I like what she did. And after I get that with that, I'm gonna put it around a bucket and get some fabric st stiffener and, and stiffen it up. And that way I can have it set and have it sit out all the time. Another one I just recently got. I had a feeling she was gonna do this. But JB's Crochet, Amber. If you've been watching her channel, especially last month, she was working on a blanket. A forget-me-not blanket. Well, She's, oh, there's a card. And stitch markers. Ooh, don't make me tear up, girl. But she made, forget me not, blanket in honor for my mother. And, oh, there's hearts. It's really well. I'd stand up, but my leg's killing me today. And I just love the way she did it. Two forget-me-nots, one on each corner. And there's two red hearts. One on opposite corners. This is, oh my. Set it down back in the box, so I don't want to. Okay, now there's the, oh, she said stitch markers. I love these. And then my colors runs in blue with some flowers. That's what she sent. And then she sent a card. A note especially for you with the squirrel. <laughs> That's cute. Dear Michael, I hope you and Panda are doing well and are healthy. When you talked about your mom and what she suffered from, I felt compelled. To make a throw in honor of those that suffer from the disease. However, as I was making it, I felt moved to make it for you. I crocheted two red hearts and attached to the throw. One is in honor of your mom, Ruby, Ruby Red, in her honor. The other, Red Heart. 
is in honor of all those that have suffered or are suffering from this disease. Made the sunflower stitch markers and with your colors. Hope you like them. I really do. Thank, thank you to you and Panda for being so awesome, supportive, and an amazing set of friends to me. Love, Amber. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Ooh, thank you so much. And put these away. I'm sitting right down and back in the box for right now. My desk is a hot mess. Um, no. Change the subject so I can quit being a crybag. Um, I'm going to be changing a little bit of the format. I'm not changing how I do tutorials, but I'm going to be changing how I start the beginning. Oh, does that make sense? The intro, I'm going to kind of do away with it for a little bit to see if that helps. And to get right back, to pretty much get straight into the making the stitch or project. There... I don't know. I, I've just I've been seeing on my analytics that things are causing people to skip. So if I can just get rid of that part and get them get, so that way there's not a lot of skipping, then and we can get right back into making the stitch or making the item. I'm gonna try that and see how that works. And if you guys have any suggestions, please just feel free to let me know. I know sometimes I have some audio issues. It's just because this mic, it's not that it's sensitive or anything, but anytime I move it, I don't pay attention to, and I should, the bottom is where I can set the sensitivity. And sometimes I make it low, or sometimes even my recording software, I forget to switch over to this mic versus the webcam mic because the webcam mic is not all that great. As you all know, webcams. So this mic is what I use for recording and my lives and my videos. And I've noticed now I've I've had to record re-record stitches because I forgot to turn on the mic. And it's picking up the webcam mic, which again is not all that great. So I have to re-record. Which is fine. You know, it's my mistake, so. But let me know if you have any suggestions of what you would like to see different in my videos. Not items or anything like that, because I've already got a huge list on that. But if you want to mention items, go ahead. I won't say no to it. I will just put it on my list. I know I was asked to do Tunisian flowers. Those are on the list, but they're down. I, I've... If I don't follow my list like how I have it, I get confused. And I like to be organized where, now my desk is not organized, but <laughs> I like to be organized with my content where when it's coming certain ways, there's, there's a rhyme reason for it. You know, I'm not going to do, just like last week's tutorial, item make tutorial was pretty much a tip or a trick or whatever you want to call it. And it was in the round. Well, a couple weeks before that was how to increase and decrease. Well, what's coming out this Friday is the beanie. Well, you need to know those two aspects to do the beanie. I know that's out there, and you would learn it in the video as well. But it gives you a chance to practice it and think of the possibilities. And, you know, sometimes you can figure it out. You won't need my video. But my video is there to help guide you. It's help guide you, help give you ideas, help to inspire your creativity. The other night I was on a live and it was on It's Rainy Yarn Russ's channel. And Rachel from Thrifted Crochet said she, her tutorials have been just basic, they're double crochet type stitches. It's nothing fancy. Well, a lot of people don't understand. Fancy's not all it's cut out to be. 
but you can take the most basic of stitches and make it fancy. And do even doing the fancy stuff that I have planned, it's time consuming. Tuni especially in Tunisian, it is very time consuming. You know, so when I put out a item make tutorial, let's say a scarf, know that at least that took me two days to make and film, maybe even three days because of the filming aspect of it. If I put out a wrap, it's taken me a minimum of a week. And that's all depending on what stitch I decide to use or what I'm putting into it design wise or color changes, etc. So fancy is not all it's cut out to be. However, it looks good. And I like to teach it so that way it makes sense to a lot of people because you can see it being done, but it doesn't make sense. Well, I want to help it make sense. And teach it in a way that you can learn it. So I think that's about everything I have. I want to thank Mama Winch and Amber. Mama Winch, a.k.a. Marianne, and JB's Crochet, Amber. So much for their gifts and honoring my mother. And I want to thank you all for being here. And with that, well, keep stitching.